Russia was preparing to carry out terrorist attacks on board cargo or passenger planes heading to the United States and Canada, the Wall Street Journal reports. Western intelligence agencies believe that two incendiary devices sent by a DHL were part of a covert Russian operation that ultimately aimed to cause fires on board civilian aircraft. The publication recalled that these devices exploded in July at DHL logistics centers. This happened in Leipzig, Germany and Birmingham, England. The blasts sparked a multinational race to find the culprits. Now investigators and spy agencies in Europe have figured out how the devices, electric messages filled with a flammable magnesium-based substance, were made and concluded they were part of a broader Russian conspiracy. The Wall Street Journal writes, Security officials say the electric messages sent to Britain from Lithuania appear to have been a trial run to see how to smuggle such incendiary devices on board planes bound for North America. Remarkably, the search for those involved was not limited to Germany and England, where the explosions occurred. The Polish National Prosecutor's Office reported the arrest of four people in connection with the fires. The country's authorities accused them of participating in sabotage or terrorist operations on behalf of foreign intelligence. Poland is cooperating with other countries to find at least two more suspects. The group's goal was also to test the channel for transmitting such packages, which were ultimately to be sent to the United States of America and Canada. The prosecutor's office said without specifying who exactly led the group's activities. The publication noted that Poland has not named the four people arrested in connection with the incendiary device incidents. Their nationalities also remain unknown. Britain is investigating the Birmingham bombing in cooperation with other law enforcement agencies in Europe. No arrests have been made, a spokesman for the country's counter-terrorism police said. Meanwhile, the head of Germany's international security agency, Thomas Haldenwang, told lawmakers that no one was hurt by the flight delay, calling it a lucky coincidence. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, responded to a Wall Street Journal inquiry by saying the Kremlin has never heard any formal accusations of Russia's involvement. In October, the Times reported that Russian spies were suspected of planting an incendiary device on a plane in the UK. It later caught fire at a DHL warehouse in Birmingham. The UK was working with law enforcement agencies in other countries to establish whether there was a link to similar recent incidents on the continent. It was noted that the parcel had arrived in Birmingham by air, highlighting the recklessness of the incident. DHL said it was taking action to protect its network staff and assets, as well as customer shipments. Russian Marines in Crimea pay their commanders to avoid being sent to fight in the Kursk region. The command is attempting to hide information about losses, according to information from the partisan movement Atesh. An agent from the 810th Marine Brigade reports that at the unit's permanent station in Sevastopol, personnel issues are arising due to most of the personnel being sent to the Kursk region. The message reads, According to partisans, almost daily reports are received about new killed in action from the Kursk region and the brigade's command is trying to hide the facts of military deaths, although, as expected, without success. The soldiers in the unit are in low morale due to the constant deaths of their comrades and are trying in every possible way to remain in Crimea. As a result, some commanders are demanding bribes from subordinates to grant a delay and avoid urgent deployment to the combat zone. Atesh notes, those who manage to pay and stay at the base are pretending to work actively by setting up camouflage barriers and moving equipment around. The 810th Marine Brigade of Russia, based in the temporarily occupied Sevastopol, Crimea, is involved in the war in Ukraine in the Kursk region. In June, partisans obtained documents from the occupiers of the 126th and 810th Crimean Brigades. Notably, in November 2023, the Ukrainian Defense Forces struck 
the 810th Brigade, which they called retaliation for the 128th Brigade, which was targeted by the Russian forces at the beginning of that month. At the time, the 128th Brigade, stationed in a frontline village in the Zaporizhia region, had been assembled for an award ceremony for Ukraine's Day of Missile Forces and Artillery. Recently, Ukrainian paratroopers said they have captured two Russian Marines from a brigade that reportedly murdered Ukrainian captives earlier this month. Kyiv said the 155th Independent Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet was seen in drone footage shooting dead Ukrainian captives following an attack on Ukrainian drone operators on October the 10th. A retaliatory attack in Kursk between the warriors of the 95th Brigade of the DSHV, the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces, and the Russian Marines resulted in the surrender of two Russian prisoners, according to a Facebook post made by the airborne assault troops of the armed forces of Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces wrote that Ukrainian troops mercilessly destroyed the occupier, but mercifully preserve his life if the enemy drops weapons and surrenders captive. Kremlin has accused the United States of preparing the European Union for a direct armed conflict with Russia. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov voiced these accusations against Washington on Monday. In case Zelensky's regime fails, as a back plan, the United States is preparing the continental Europe to rush into a suicidal adventure and enter into a direct armed conflict with Russia, Sergei Lavrov said. Addressing the international symposium titled, Creating the Future, the top Russian diplomat claimed that Anglo-Saxons expect Russia's defeat in the ongoing war in Ukraine, just as Hitler did in his time, gathering most of European countries under the Nazi banner. The foreign minister also claimed that the ruling elites of a number of European countries do not see a future for themselves in a multipolar world and are looking for salvation from an overseas hegemon, meaning the United States. The minister stressed that Russia is not close to a dialogue with the West. However, Moscow will consider proposals to resume contacts, taking into account its own national interests, Lavrov said. Earlier, the Russian foreign ministry said that the West's war against Russia still had hybrid elements, but was increasingly turning into a real, direct, war. The ministry also stated that the United States and its satellites were trying to turn entire Eurasia into an arena of geopolitical confrontation, adding that it was this aggressive course that provoked the Ukrainian crisis triggered by the coup in February 2014.